Max, thanks for coming to the studio with oh, me. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here, Lindsay. Well, you say China holds all the cards in these talks. What cards are we talking about, and how tightly does it hold them? Well, you know, China to orchestrate the global trade, and because of a lot of other dynamic pieces in this global puzzle, China's now buying stuff. They're buying huge purchases of stuff. Yeah. And they are becoming hugely influential in the global economy from a monopolist position. I predict that they will buy Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Oh, and they'll God. become America's biggest landlord because the US needs to get rid of that debt. And China's got the cards. And they'll say, okay. through Trump, who's the art of the deal? He'll sell American out to China. And they'll become like every, every month you write a check to the People's Bank of China. You're terrifying us Thanks right now. Thanks to Trump, okay. because well, he's a deal maker. He's not a politician. He just sells. He just does deals. He likes, you, to, he likes to go to the golf course and do deals. He doesn't actually do politics. Well, China's not going to be playing golf because uh, Xi Jinping thinks that it's corrupt. Apparently, secret, they have a secret three-stroke uh, uh, putting surface hidden away. Right, to give of the, course. The so he secret, can play it in secret. Uh, the joy of golf without exposing himself right. to criticism back home. Well, also, you know, you talk about uh, Chinese workers versus workers in Mexico. That this is going to be a big deal. Under, under Clinton, but they don't, and the trade deals that are in place, like NAFTA, was supposedly to help Mexican workers. Uh, now I think the, yeah, average, right. the average Chinese wage is above Mex average uh, Mexican wage. So they've been very good at playing a global game that is filling the vacuum now that the neoliberal post-World War II so-called Washington consensus model is collapsing. It hasn't worked. The U.S. soft power is collapsing. I mean, look at on April's Fool, April Fool's Day, the Russian uh, consulate was trolling America by you know, having a fake phone set up saying, if you want to have us hack your election, <laughs> press 2. You know, if you want us to uh, be... This. They have got a weak position on the back foot. You're talking about sort of the neoliberal trend after the war with all of these deals. It's going to crumble. China's going to come up. What's going to be their shtick? That's what I want to know. What's going to be their shtick? You're the guy to ask. What's going to be their political shtick? What's their, you know, we, we want trade deals. We don't want. You heard Hillary Clinton going back and forth. What's going to be the deal with them? I mean, what's going to take the place of this neoliberal model? That's what I'm saying. That's, thank you. That's what I'm trying to well, say. Well, I mean, um, it, it, that's a good question. I think that uh, what's going to happen is that the U.S. is going to sell off huge pieces of its of its of the country, as I said, Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac would be a huge deal to be sold to uh, the Chinese government, for example, or other such deals. I think America's going to be sold off in pieces, just like the United Kingdom's being sold off in pieces. Brexit's a failure; it won't work in any sense of the imagination. And the privatization that is on trend in the UK right now, like selling their health service, the national health service, to American contractors, is very much in play, and that will go forward because these uh, countries no longer have political leaders; they have businessman hacks who are in bed with conglomerates and mon monopolists and private equity firms like uh, Blackstone or others. And they totally control the money supply through the Federal Reserve System. They've got interest rates yeah, at 0%. They're time. borrowing money at 0% to buy strategic stakes in these very uh, key companies. Uh, as was said. And they won't, for instance, China won't import something until it owns part of that company, and then it'll just bring it right in. Yeah, they're not fair in their business dealings. No, they, they're making a, they're they, making a lot of money on they, it. They don't. What do you, <laughs> they're not fair, Lindsay. We know this. I mean, they're calling golf corrupt. And look at, I just can't even. There's no. It's like uh, a woman and a man. You know, like. Oh, okay. Let's the, go the into woman this is, now. Is, is, they're, they're, they're not. They don't go by the rules, do they? In, well, in no. Like, it's they, 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 everything goes. That's the China's approach. They don't. They don't obey the like law. They don't obey the rules. In the relationship between America and China, China's the the woman. Who's, 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 like, who's, hey. yeah, basically the just. The honeypot. Exactly. Okay. What do you think, of, what, do you, what do you say to people who are like, you know, Sally Mae and Freddie Mac, no way, surely not. How would you convince them of, of that actually happening? Well, just look at the trends. Look at what's happening. Look at the underlying um, There's action. There's got to be some amount these, of denial between, there, between, between these two countries. The U.S. has the complete inability coming to America and they buy stuff. They go to Europe. Syngenta is a Swiss company. It's a huge multi-billion dollar, what, 43, 46 billion dollar deal. Yeah. Th that and not Monsanto is being sold to Bayer in Germany. These are the two key players in the GMO, genetically modified organism business. The seed business. So you have a patent. You have control over seeds. You have control over the food stock. And you're getting rid of the ability for independent farmers to grow food independent of a corporation. That's why in India, where Monsanto has been active, 
if you have thousands of Indian farmers committing suicide because this big company has totally destroyed their ability yeah. to be self-sustaining independent farmers. Right, the little guys are uh, losing out and China's moving in. Thank you very much, Max Kaiser. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming in. All right. <laughs> it's a big blowback happening in the advertising world right now. First up, reality TV star Kendall Jenner in a Pepsi ad. She steps away from a modeling shoot to join a crowd of smiling yes. He's just pulled it. In other trivializing news, this one of treatment of women by Fox News, nearly two dozen advertisers paying big bucks for commercial breaks on Bill O'Reilly's Fox News show have pulled their ads <laughs> after accusation on top of accusation uh, over flagrant sexual misconduct has surfaced. These include Mitsubishi, Allstate, Bayer. What is going uh, to actually happen, though, to the titan of this television show? That's what people want to know. Now, legal and media analyst Lionel have also have to prepare to deal with some very unanticipated problems. Boom Bus Bianca Pashini is here to fill us in on those problems. One of the world's biggest, Brazil, uh, aside from the underground shopping and, and siphoning for oil and gas uh, and diesel, what else are the criminal groups doing? I'm guessing they're not stopping there. Yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, when I say sophisticated, they, they truly are. The, these gangs are mainly made up of militias, which right. are full of former police officers, so they're very well connected in their communities. And they siphon oil by, um, you know, stealing it through their tubes and then processing it in secret refineries. So they really have a whole setup set up for themselves. Um, but they also, you know, go about it in more traditional ways by just hijacking the tanker truck. Oh, that's so, nice. you know, so either as way it works as long as they just get their oil. Um, and I mean, they've done. <laughs> I don't want to say that they're successful because I don't want to. Or in in what worth? But then some investigators are saying, listen, there's no way that people inside of petrol Bras don't know about this. Exactly. Not that people at the, the top thing. are necessarily orchestrating it, but they think that these militias have some moles inside that are helping them. Because if you look at the networks, I mean, it's a very risky business to go in and just steal oil from They've underground got pipelines. Taps. They've got these <laughs> well-engineered uh, stuff. Real quick, what are exactly. the uh, the gangs? Uh, you know, these gangs are a new phenomenon. Petrobras is one of the top ten most large oil companies in the world. Uh, this is new for Brazil. How are they going to uh, handle something like this? Exactly. Like you said, it's new. I mean, if we look at other countries around the world, for instance, Nigeria, they've dealt with militias That's and right. gangs stealing oil for a long time. But Brazil, this is a new phenomenon. So it just adds a whole other layer to their political and economic crises, because as we know, a lot of both of them derive from oil. So exactly. My guest says that we should look to an array of special interests to find evidence to corroborate Donald Trump's accusations last year that the United States is being used as a piggy bank to build China. I caught up with former U.S. Trading Commissioner Bart Shilton to talk banks, massive mergers, the coal lobby, and what it means for the meeting of the presidents of the United States and China today. The Chinese banks that do business with North Korea, potentially we could place sanctions, the U.S. could place sanction on those Chinese banks if they're facilitating cross-border uh, transactions with North Korea. Although I don't anticipate that's probably what he's probably talking about. He's probably talking about some military action, which would just be uh, horrendous. China horrendous. China Sea, I mean, for instance. Uh, yeah. And, and, and the issue you have to remember, I mean, even if you're talking about, you know, missiles, uh, is that going into North Korea. Um, our exports are agricultural. So in January, Trump uh, called it totally one-sided. What do you predict? Um, how is this actually going to change after this meeting, after the words, after the deliber deliverables? Yeah. Well, what I, massive change are we really going to see? How is it not going to be one-sided suddenly? I don't think that there, we're going to slap a 45% tariff on uh, which was Chinese threat, goods, which was the uh, like the, the president uh, said last, last year, just that uh, what they believe is that being part of the climate pact, having a seat at the table, right, gives that, that, that that will allow them, the coal companies, to encourage uh, coal usage in some of the developing countries that have a less stringent cap on greenhouse emissions. So they will export U.S. coal to wherever it is, sub-Saharan Africa or other places that are in the developing world, uh, and that'll be a boon. All right, that's all for now. From all of us here at Boom Boss, thanks for watching. See you next time.